Good morning, guys. Happy Sunday. So, I am actually going live with one of my dear sister, soul sisters and friends in business, um, Ebony Tutora of Queens, Recognized Queens. Um, and we were having some technical difficulties earlier, but we should be up and going. Uh, let's see. She should be on here shortly. And she's actually going to lead this, the live and, and I will be sharing my little story. It told me to turn it too, but I didn't turn it and it let me go. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I don't know what in the world, but I'm locked and loaded. People were yacht. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna share this on my pages too. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know what was up. We're with just that. leave it like this. <laughs> huh? We're just gonna leave it like this. We're live, so we're good. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> yeah, happy Sunday, almost 20 minutes later, but it's all good. It's so, all good. Sometimes things don't go as planned. Life will teach us that. Right? Tis life. So I'm going to go just come over here just so I can see comments from the page and respond to them. And not Hi. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry we're a little Hi. late. You, welcome you for everybody who's joining us. If you're watching us on the playback, please comment. Playback. So we are on Precious, we are on Precious's page. Um, and the reason why I do Sunday Soul Chat is to bring powerful people, powerful tools, and powerful stories because we, we are here to unlock our fullest potential, right? Which sounds so fluffy, but at the end of the day, it's really being able to get past other fears. And a lot of times we just feel alone. We feel like we're the only ones going through certain struggles in life. And that's just not true. And when we see how other people have pulled through and we find proof and powerful people with powerful tools, that gives us the ability to gain an inch or two belief in ourselves. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I know that you guys follow Precious. You're probably like, what's going on? So this is Sunday Soul Chat um, segment on your page. Hopefully I can save this. <laughs> um, not, I'll save it and send it. Yeah, so just, I did announce you on the other page for my followers, and I like how your page actually says, says wellness guru, um, healer. What, what else does it say on your main thing? I was like, that is I so I think good. wellness guru, author, entrepreneur, healer, lashologist, I think. <laughs> hustler. Oh, hustler, hustler healer, hustler, yeah, healer, yeah. Yeah, you gotta have a little hustle in you, and I think the hustle, I think, in us, is that it's almost like that higher purpose that will makes you keep moving regardless and figure it out right um but tell us who you are tell us who you are in your own words um i am precious <laughs> i'm precious um i am a certified wellness coach but and i have many titles but my faves are as ebony mentioned wellness guru author entrepreneur I like to throw in there hustler because the reality is, is that we're all multi-talented and multi-creative. Um, and so I have several uh, ways that I express my creativity and um, give service to the world. And then also healer, which is really my deepest um, passion and my heart's calling, um, which is to help women and men, but women um, heal from past trauma and things of that nature. Yeah, which I love that. I love Hello. that because I, being a, a healer, um, you kind of show up in your purpose through your experiences. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Using how it works that way. Um, so I just kind of want to jump into it because the purpose of this conversation is to really talk about that period of time for you where life hit and you ended up kind of spiraling into a three-year depression. Yes. Um, and I think just, I, I know where I live, and you're from Pittsburgh, so we do share being Pennsylvania Knights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're both from Pennsylvania. But um, just really, in this time, I feel like 
usually a lot of depression for people sometimes hits in the in the fall winter time because it's seasonal it's Absolutely. very seasonal and just even in our own lives and i think you talked about this before too just being able to recognize that we're depressed yeah like no what that is and not um you know like pushing it under the carpet and finding not so healthy ways to cope with the ways that we feel so Absolutely. i just want you to talk about your depression um and then i really the, the what i really love is i want to get into affirmations because yeah. i am a huge fan and believer of affirmation um and then you're going to also share with us some tips that you use to get happy so yeah <laughs> just about that and like what that depression looked like for you what did it look like day to day so interestingly enough, um, because I had never experienced depression before that time, which happened about three years ago, um, or, you know, a little on past three years ago, um, I would say like four years ago now. Um, but because I hadn't experienced it before, I didn't know what the hell hit me, to be quite honest. Um, I thought, you know, I thought I was just sad and I thought, okay, I'm gonna shake it off. I'm gonna hustle it off. I'm gonna work it off. I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm actually a very type A personality type. And um, in some ways, I can be very strong. But it was interesting, because um, when I fell into depression, it, there was no, there was, I, I'm not gonna say there was no shaking it, but it wasn't as easy as I thought to just like get up and okay, I'm gonna feel better tomorrow. There were days, you know, that weren't as heavy or as intense. But but what, when I was going through, it was it was it was hard, you know. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about like what happened that led to the depression. Um, so it was interesting because prior to uh, falling into depression and even developing anxiety, because I didn't know what that was either. And it's funny, I had people in my life who would say, you know, they were they struggled with that or they. Um, experience depression and it's something that in my experience you can't really understand until you uh until you've really been through like most things in life you know <laughs> you can sympath um, empathize but sympathizing is something totally um different if you haven't really had those experiences so for me at the time um prior to the depression i was living in the maryland dc area for eight years um at a corporate job at that time it was going on my fifth year um and i also ran my holistic health and wellness coaching business where I help women and men lose weight and, and implement healthy eating lifestyle, eating and lifestyle practices, well, as well as doing like meal prep, cooking, talks, workshops, dem demonstration, things like that. So, and I also belong to this like amazing fitness community at the time. So for me, I was living my dream. I was living my best life. I was loving every bit of it. I was probably, <laughs> <laughs> I was probably the most fit. I was the most fit cop. I said, live uh, your best life. Yeah, I was, that was before the term was a, a trendy thing. But I was fit. I was more, uh, the most fit I had been. And I was just having an amazing time. And one day, um, literally one day, <laughs> I went into work. They said they were reducing effort on a contract. Oh, I was also the most financially stable, you know. So things were really, really good. Things, relationships were good. Me and my friends, we were branching, you know, things were amazing. One in the work, they said, they told us that they were reducing effort on contract and that they would be laying a lot of us off, including myself. Um, and, uh, and so I thought to myself, no big deal. You know, I'll just get another job or I'll figure it out. Well, probably not even a whole week after that, I came home at the time I had, um, downsized and started living with a roommate who at the time was also expecting and planning um, a wedding and her and her hu husband one week after I got laid off decided that they were going to um, go a different direction with the property and that I would need to be leaving what well, was nearing my lease anyways but I had like less than two months to move so mind you I have to move out of my house um, and I don't have a job so now that's when the internal <laughs> shit started happening. I'm like, oh shit, like what's happening? Like I lost my job. Now one week later, my house. So I thought, all right, whatever. You know, I told you I was a part of a big fitness community. So I was like, I'll go to yoga. 
relaxed. I'm going to relax one afternoon after my Whole Foods run with all my groceries in the car, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I go to Whole Foods. I mean, I go to yoga. So I'm going to run a yoga before I go home. And, you know, I'm going to decompress, whatever. Somehow my keys, my car keys end up missing. I had a very old car at the time and um, had like, I don't know, 200,000 miles on it. But the, the key I learned, you need the master key in order to, for the computer to turn on. Otherwise you need a whole new computer. So anyways, the keys went missing. I found out that day that it would be like $2,200 for a new computer and a new set of keys. I'm like, how the hell am I going to pay for a car, a $2,200 bill when I don't even have a job at this point or out. So that's when things kind of like really went south. And that happened within a matter of a week of each other. So literally without, within like two to three weeks, I lost my car, house and job. And I still never thought it was such a big deal. I thought, oh, well, I'll figure it out. I'll move back home. I moved home to Pittsburgh. I thought I'd get a job or something. The other point or part of this is that I also had um, dual degree. So I'm thinking it's no big deal. You know, I could easily get, get a position. Didn't happen. And that's when a depression hit after probably applying for like over a hundred jobs and going after all these opportunities and trying to ramp up my business in a new city. It just did it. Things didn't move. And that's when I fell into a deep depression. I questioned everything about myself. I question everything about my abilities. I question everything about my surroundings, you know, and I question, I literally question everything. I spent most of my days crying, um, most of my days like feeling some, and it, it even got, it did get really bad um, to the point to where I was like, you know what? I don't know if I could do this anymore. Like I'm tired because at this point we're looking at, you know, all this stuff happens. So I'm going into a year and a half, two years into being depressed, you know? And I'm like, this, this is too much. This is too much for anyone to bear, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Things weren't letting up. The money wasn't <laughs> coming in. I barely, you know, had money to eat, you know? I might have been eating like one little meal a day. My sister at the point one time said, is that all you eat is oatmeal? I'm like, you get a pound of oatmeal for a dollar ninety-nine cent or something, and this shit stretches. This is what I eat, you know? Um, but yeah, it was I don't know, it was it was like probably not even like I mean, not even probably, it was the most it was the darkest time that I experienced in my life. And I never in some ways I didn't know if I would ever see the light of day. That's how bad it was. And it wasn't, it didn't matter how many people tried to, you know, you got it, pressure. You're going to be all right. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you bring that up because I know just listening to your story and just connecting with you over the past year or so, actually, we're, we've been friends for over a year, almost a year and a half. Yeah. Coming up. Um, it was like June or July ish. Oh, no, maybe before that. Anyways, who cares? So um, I love that you talk about just a couple points of how you started questioning yourself and just the, the circumstance. Did I pause? No, no, no. I was saying hi. I was telling, I was saying welcome. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, you guys. Yeah. Welcome to everyone who's watching. Um, this is Precious. If you follow her, you know who she is. If you don't follow her, um, she has an amazing story. And today we're talking about how she did get over depression. So what you were just talking about was your situations that led there. Yeah. And I think anybody watching on the playback, I just want people to understand that pinpoint in your own self where you have felt this same way, where no one could motivate you, where things were just looking down and you were questioning yourself. You were questioning yourself. You were questioning your purpose. You were questioning, you know, am I worthy to be here? Like, am I worthy to be here on this earth? And depression is such a funky thing because I think now you talked about, you talk about this. So your podcast, you guys, please look out for her podcast. It's coming Wednesday because we get a little bit more in depth and it's just another amazing conversation with her. But um, you say like looking on the outside in now that you can turn around and look back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, so feel that light within yourself and feel that truth within yourself. Um, I think just the way that you just broke that down about like how life happens, how life it happens, does. hits, 
and it will <laughs> and everybody we can handle it yeah, yeah we think I've been through this I can handle that or you know I have a degree I literally experienced that same thing where I'm like I have a degree I'll be fine you know I have tons of experience I've worked in New York you know and and I didn't it didn't work out that way but more than that that period for you I'm sure it's a blessing now looking back because you're Absolutely. able to um, you're able to lift yourself up and you started to do that by really looking at, and you had talked about something where you said how you were speaking to yourself, like internally, the things that you were saying and how people were saying to you, you know, you're, you're, I don't know how they worded it to you, but you're being like, is that how you talk to yourself? Or something yeah. Along those lines? Well, the interesting thing is that because for my life, things were, I guess, prior to this, like, Really, once I made a decision um, to leave home at 17 to go to school, um, there were there were definitely many uh, challenges along the way, but I was kind of directing my own path at that point. And I was living the life that I thought that I should live from 17 until this happened around like 28, 29, I can't remember, maybe 30. Oh, no, definitely maybe 30 because I'm 34. So anyways, for about 17 years, you know, I was living a life that I wanted to live but the interesting thing is that what the depression showed me wait let me take a step back so i was living a life that i already that i wanted to live and so i didn't really have a reason to look at you know what my self-talk potentially might have been or what my other issues potentially had been that really kind of stemmed from childhood from my growing up experiences from various relationships and things like that so what ha what really what depression really showed me what, what is what was underneath you know it's all good when it's all good you know um and I say that to say I didn't, I didn't have a reason to think about how I was treating myself how I was talking to myself my life was good you know I was living a life I wanted to I was making money doing it I was in a career that I didn't mind, a, a corporate career, and I was also running a business that I loved. You know what I mean? So there was no real reason to put the magnifying glass in my face and say, hey, Precious, how can you develop? How can you grow? Even though if any if any of you on here um, actually know me personally, and I'm sure you can attest to this too, Ebony, I am a very progressive thinker, and I am a very, in some ways, positive person, but it's like there's, even in that, even with that truth, there still were underlying issues that I hadn't de dealt with that depression put in my face. And I was faced to really, really figure it out because when the pain gets deep enough, I, I in my experience and experiences and just talking to people, when the pain gets deep enough and when you get tired enough, there's only about two choices you have to make. It's either to rise up or fall down. And for some people, unfortunately, um, sadly, and God rest the people's souls who take that route, but some people don't make it, you know? And for me, in my mind, I'm like, I want to live, and I want to live good, and I have to figure this shit out. I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm going to figure this out. And so I was also praying a lot. I was like asking God to reveal to me what like it's because it was funny I was talking to people too I'm like come on like I don't know why I'm not myself and so I was asking God to reveal to me is there something that I'm not getting is there a move that I need to make is there something that I need to someone I need to forgive is there something that I need to need to remedy um to let go of to heal from what is it and it was like one day I was sitting there and it just hit me like a ton of bricks what was a huge issue with myself and my life and why I wasn't moving out of this place. And it's funny because it wasn't until I shifted that things started to shift. And it truly was my perspective and perception on my life and where I was at and how I was dealing with my life in that space. So I was very negative. I was pissed off, first of all. I was very entitled. I felt like I put in the work to create a better outcome and a better life for myself. So why don't I have it? And so I spent most of my time in those two to three years really being angry, really being upset, really blaming myself, like 
blaming a lot of other people like you know or when I say other people I more so mean like looking at my childhood and just being pissed off and um, yeah. I spent time <laughs> just cursing myself out cursing people out in my head not actually um not verbally but I was just like upset and all of what I used to say to myself was like why or how come not or whatever you know I dwelled in that space of um really like pity it was I was very I was very very pitiful <laughs> um and I can say that you know I'm not saying that for somebody else but the truth of the matter is is that you can't rise if you if you sit in a place of pity and you keep yeah. you know you don't take ownership or accountability for the role that you might potentially be playing in your life circumstances or situations and so for me I had to make I had to I had to be honest with that and then I had to really start thinking about okay um precious you know is as, as wonderful and amazing as you are is a wonderful and amazing as people say you are um that has nothing to do with how you are showing up in this space and in this season of your life and and you're showing up in a very nasty and ugly way in a way that you're not being kind to yourself at all and so funny enough the light bulb moment happened but the shift didn't happen when the light bulb moment happened the shift happened when I chose to make a decision about how I was going to shift how I was going to show up differently and I did this out of pure faith because I didn't know you know I didn't know if I shifted would things change but I believed in myself enough to know you know what if you want something different you got to try something different and for two to three years you've been be beating yourself up you've been upset you've been pissed off and maybe give yourself a, a, a take a chance on yourself you know and I also mm -hmm. had been I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad that honestly y'all I'm glad that I could be a vessel because this was something so major for me like I wasn't getting it you know but when I got it I got it and so I was saying to myself, you know, um, take a chance on yourself. And so the thing was, um, I had already been into self-help and personal growth. Like one of my first books I ever read personal growth wise was the Yana Van, Van Zandt's Acts of Faith. And I fell in love. And from there, I was all um, all into personal growth uh, and self, self um, personal uh, growth and self-help books. And so I had already been reading about like mindset and how you know, and we've all heard it. You've heard the phrases. If you want better, you got to think better. If you want better, you got to speak better. But for me, this became a real thing. And so I made the decision in my life that I was going to shift. And I put a hard stop to the bullshit. And when I say a hard stop, I mean a hard stop. At that point, I took 21 days. And I said, you know what, Precious, for three weeks, you're going to spend time with yourself. I'm about to freaking ball. <laughs> wow. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Whoa. It is okay. Sorry. It is okay. Oh my goodness. No, no that's, I love, listen, <laughs> these moments mean everything to me. And Whoa. girl, let it go. <laughs> and I think, you so, know, it's just, it's you coming to that. Yeah. You know, so for I, me, I feel appreciation. I feel your gratitude. I feel, you yeah. know, proud. it was real. So I, I of said, knowing you know, how to be space. Yeah. yeah. So I said, you know what, Precious, for 21 days, you're going to speak different. You're going to change how you show up. Um, and I did. I took 21 days. I got a journal. Um, I started thinking of, I started listening to myself, like really listening to like the things that was making me, I mean, the things that I was saying to myself that was stemming from different experiences. Like, I started really looking at, like, my insecurities, my fears, and how all of those things, like, caused me to really talk um, down to myself. Like, those quiet um, moments that you really, uh, sometimes you can't even hear if you're so crowded out by, like, people and, you know, distracted by how you yeah. go about your life. You know what I mean? But uh, I mean, you know, distracted about just being busy in life. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take 21 days and I'm gonna like l listen to myself. I'm gonna figure out where the challenges are. Like, where am I speaking to myself in such a negative way? And I'm gonna use affirmations to combat to get at the root of those thoughts and feelings. And I did. I took 21 days and morning, noon, and night. My life consisted of 
getting up in the morning, asking God for strength to shift. Then I would speak positive affirmations over myself. Like, I am pretty. I am worthy. I am capable. I am strong. I can't have the life I desire and deserve. And then, like, I would do that morning, noon, and night. Every time I heard myself say something that wasn't um, geared toward where I wanted to be, I would insert uh, uh, I would insert the positive alternative, you know, and um, and um, what was amazing, the true, what was truly amazing was that after that, my life changed. I swear to God, like it was like a weight lifted up, and it was like God was trying to tell me, precious, if you want to change, you got to change. Nobody, listen, like I've had, I haven't had the worst experiences growing up but I've had my fair share of shit and in some ways what I realize is that we're always looking for someone else to tell us it's going to be okay to tell us you know we can be different or better to save us you know to come and save us to pour into us to fill us up and I had those same experiences myself and what I realized is that Ain't shit going to change unless you change and you become dependent upon yourself to change. And so that's what I did. I was like, you know what? I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to depend on me. I, I, I made, I, I took ownership. Like if you, if, if things are going to shift, um, you have to shift them and nobody is coming to save you. You know what I mean? You are con in control of your life. You are con in control of your destiny outside well inside of the will of god because we can't control we can't control if something is not for us it's just not for us and so the the careful thing there is to really spend time in silence to hear your intuitions to hear god's voice to hear you know the guidance on the path because we're all on this path and this journey to try to figure out how we can live happily how we can Absolutely. live feel good living experiences um mm -hmm. And so, yeah, anyways, I took ownership. And and honestly, right after that, it was like shit just start opening all the way up. Life just started. It didn't become like, oh, I got a million dollars tomorrow or, you know. Um, yeah. You know, it wasn't like that um, obvious, but it was like the weight lifted. My creativity came back. My voice, like I heard my real voice. I heard, like, I heard what I wanted and what I stood for, and I felt confident to move toward that, and not only in business and purpose and destiny and career, but in relationships. I gained this level of confidence in my friendships and my intimate relationships. And I say that to say, um, it's not like I don't still struggle, but I have more. I have more strength. And I have more direction. You know what I mean? And it came from me making that choice. So yeah. I'm not to talk y'all head off. If y'all know me, yeah. I talk about it. Okay. So I just want to say thank you so much for your um, vulnerability today. Because in <laughs> vulnerability, you, you, you're you real with yourself, right? You had to look yeah. at yourself and be vulnerable. And to me, vulnerability is the key to authenticity. Because mm -hmm. so many times. We're holding things in and we have people that are saying they're crying there's people that are going to take your 21 day challenge it's going to be called the precious 21. <laughs> <laughs> i got y'all after the new year i'm working on something for, yeah, for yeah. people who and that's so trust funny. me if you want to start early. huh yeah yeah. yes yeah and we're going to get to it because there is a tool that you guys can use that she's releasing she has released already and i hope you guys go purchase it after we get off of this um live but um, it's available for purchase, yes? Not yet, um, after the tour, after the tour. Okay, we'll get there. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought this was really even more perfect because I was doing an affirmation challenge with an app. And I know you and I talked about this where you were saying um, how some people just think affirmations are just foo-foo, yeah. it's yeah. not gonna work. And I love what you did because in just, my growing and learning about affirmations and you know trying to coach people through it affirmations don't work if you're trying to use things that aren't in your soul yeah right so you are able to look at those negative thoughts and say oh my gosh this is this is what you're saying to yourself yeah. now i've got to thing exactly opposite to negate mm -hmm. that 
So I love mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and just can I interject? Can I interject real quick? So I agree that oftentimes they don't resonate when they're not uh, specific to what you're dealing with. But what I yeah. want to say there, because I don't want I want people to be clear that sometimes it's hard to like even um, come up with you know, your, your positive alternative to what, whatever you're dealing with. But what's powerful is that even if the affirmation necessarily doesn't resonate, if you use it, you cut off the negative thought. And in that yeah. space, you re- start to reprogram your brain to think differently. So even if you're not at that point where you can say, okay, you know what, let me really, really get, because sometimes it's hard to really go deep. It requires a, a level, like you said, of vulnerability and honesty to really look at what are my real, you know, what are my deepest um, thought processes that are hurting me? Sometimes yeah. it, it's, it's deep, deep, you know? <laughs> so um, sure. I think even being conscious about, even if you don't use affirmation, go do something, you know, call somebody. Um, I say that because you don't want to get into that necessarily into that dependency, but it's okay to have people that you can talk to that speak life over you, but it's important to interrupt those negative thoughts when they come as much as you can, as quick as you can. Yeah. And I like affirmations because I know a in depression, we isolate ourselves a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. That happens where we isolate ourselves. We intentionally, you know, stay away from people. We kind of just, we want to be alone because that's like a soul processing time. Right. Um, So I love affirmations because I feel like going back to you saying like, Precious, you have to become your own hero. You have to become your own savior in doing that, being able to sit with yourself and build yourself up in those dark moments and say, I'm going to bloom. As hard as it feels right now, I'm going to bloom. And what I was saying was listening to you talk, it just reminds me of life and my own growth and, and recognizing that pain has driven me to a yeah. lot of great places right yeah. and then you get to those places and then things happen and then they bust you know they break you down to a different level to where now yeah. you've got to really really look at like you said those thought processes that are really really happening yeah. you know to where I hear them in other people I can hear them now mm-hmm. I just I just hear them all the time where I'm like that's gotta yeah. work on yourself. <laughs> you know yeah so and thank you, everyone else, for joining. Thank you, everyone else, for joining. Thank you, Jess Meyer Glover. Thank you so much, Catherine, um, and everyone yeah, else. Thanks for, for your comments. Um, I didn't get it. I was too busy <laughs> crying that I didn't get a chance to really read. But um, yeah, you're welcome, Catherine, Debbie, Jess Meyer, everyone who's on today. You're welcome. Like I said, I'm just grateful to be a vessel, truthfully, because this is not the stuff that we're taught. You know, this is not, I, I mean, especially if you like me, I grew up in the hood to a traditional, quote unquote, um, in a traditional black familial situation. And um, our parents coming out of, you know, civil rights and all that on the other end of that, the last thing they were thinking about was mental, emotional health. You know, it was about providing for the family and sometimes we our generation um got the negative effects for that and then we know obviously the crack epidemic hit in the 80s and 70s 80s and all of that so that ruined our families um and so we are on the other end of that and we, and, some, and oftentimes we're well not even oftentimes but the reality is we're dealing with the effects of some of that and so yeah um yeah i mean it's like i i wasn't i didn't learn this and, and you know, I didn't. No one taught me this. I had to figure this, figure this out. And so I'm happy to be able to be a, a vessel, honestly, um, for anyone who you know might be going through something similar. Um, yeah. And I think they they are. And one of the things that you said, I think many people are honestly. And I I was watching a video yesterday with Mel Robbins where she gave a number of the percentage of Americans that are unhappy. And it probably was it was over a hundred million people in total yeah. that are unhappy. Right. So I think being able to open up these discussions, to be able to be vulnerable, to be able to show people your office, you know, where you've come through and where you are today and to be honest and say, you know what, sometimes these things still come up. But now I have a powerful tool. And I think if you agree with me on this, but I I know that once you build up certain pillars within yourself, Mm -hmm. like 
life, right? Things are going to happen. I said, life is life. We're still yeah. very young, you know? Yeah. But once you build certain pillars, it's just like building up a house. You know, do you build it on sand or do you build it on a, a, a foundation that's, um, that can withstand the storms? So to yeah. me, being these processes are things that withstand the storm because life is storms and that's just the way that it is. Um, but you definitely become more, um, I, what I would say in my personal experience is that I definitely become more rooted, you know, mm -hmm. I'm rooted in my sense of self. I'm rooted in um, yeah. what can really like, you know, a tree is rooted, so it might shake, but it's not fall. It might even bend a little, but it's not going to fall. Um, and so, like, because I've I've taken, you know, I've, I've really taken this part of my journey um, serious and, and put a lot of intention into growing those roots. I'm definitely stronger, you know. Um, even to be able to have an, to have this conversation, there was a time I remember me and one of my friends in high school had a pact like that. We we and it was weird because. Your self awareness comes over time. So I think in high school we were first becoming self aware of like you know what our struggles, personal struggles were. But I remember we had a pact that we would never ever ever admit we had self esteem issues. And so I said I have to say to be talk even talking about it is like in some ways when I think about think back I'm like you're a crazy girl <laughs> you just telling it all. But I mean that there's there's um well one you're generally able to discuss what you you know, heal from. Um, I can't say I'm completely, you know, the most confident, but I'm definitely way more confident and I'm way stronger. And so because of that, I can sit here and openly talk about what I've been through um, and share the, you know, like you said, share how I've become rooted and, and how I show up to life differently today than I did, you know, a few years ago or even a year ago, you know, two years ago. So. Yeah, which I think is amazing because going back to the beginning, you said you didn't ever think you would see the light. Oh, so it's no. really just the reality of being in those moments and being honest with the despair that we really feel in those moments because yeah. it's deep. It's yeah. really of being able to look in the mirror. And I know that's why so many of us will avoid looking in the mirror because that shit hurts. Yeah, it, <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It does. And being work through it, being able to understand it, being able to use that pain as power, powerful mm -hmm. power to heal is just so amazing. And that kind of led you to writing your book. Yeah. So, so tell us a bit about your book. Um, it's um, your time. Yeah. So it's your time um, is my new book. It will actually be officially launched at the end of the year, toward the end of the year. Um, However, um, I am doing a tour. You've probably seen me post about this on my page. I'm doing a book tour. And if you come to the tour as part of the um, as part of the ticket price, the book is included. So you will get the book before the people who wait till the end of the year. <laughs> but the book is It's Your Time, a little book of affirmations for healing your deepest insecurities and greatest fears. Um, and the book truly was born out of my own experiences. It's, I like to think, I like to say it's a coming to age project where it's like I was, I connected the dots between where I was and where I'm actually going. And it was um, my way of providing a resource or a tool to share how I did it. Um, but I do tell my personal story in the beginning. I tell why it's important to affirm yourself. And then the most, the meat of the book is um, affirmations that you can use in your day-to-day -day life um, to shift, you know, to um, shift how you show up and how you think and how you speak to yourself. Um, my greatest intention behind it behind the book is kind of like what we're doing here, which is really to normalize conversations around some of these sensitive topics that most of us would never talk about outside of our intimate circles. Because part of my challenge when I was trying to heal and along my healing journey was that I was just so ashamed. And I was like, who, I can't even talk, tell anybody this. I can't talk to nobody about this. Um, it, it was just, too, to me, it was too much of a burden to bear to try to share with someone else. And so my deepest intention really is to create spaces where we can share, where we can be open, because the reality is, is, is part of the healing journey is 
being able to share it. We can't heal from what we don't confront, what we don't acknowledge, and we what we don't reveal. It just fester, it grows, and it just manifests in how what we're getting in our life and the relationships we're attracting and the friends we we seem to end up you know, always connecting with and all of the drama, you know, it just manifests itself in that way if we don't find healthy outlets and ways to really, really, you know, open up sp or, or create space for some of that stuff to come up. There's so many um, tools and ways you can do it. Um, again, affirmations was one that I use. Meditation is powerful actually um i know you put this on that on the, on the <laughs> so ab has inside info about my meditation teacher uh, training program that i was in but i actually am i've completed the program so next year i'll be i'll be uh teaching meditation but that's another powerful tool ebony also does um amazing meditation uh classes online and stuff like that we're kind of aligned in a, in a way that we really want to help people grow and just really heal. Um, so there's so many different tools you can use, but the book um, was one tool that I thought that I could provide that would give people insight into me, my life, where I've been and how what I've used to overcome some of my greatest um, challenges to date. You know, uh, prayerfully, <laughs> the road, I believe the road will be easier moving forward. But um, yeah. And so, yeah, it's a tool for, for healing and support along your journey. And it's a reminder that you can heal. Like you can literally get over the shit that you thought that you think that you can't get over. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. And not even that you can, you need to. Like, yeah, you need to. I, <laughs> for the greater good of all of us. All need to heal, you know, because you hear it. I mean, you hear it in politics. You hear it in day-to-day -day things. I hear it when I see women compare other women um, to themselves or downplay themselves. You know, I just, I'm so tuned into it. And it, yeah. you know, that's a journey for me to be able to hear and not take things personally when I say good morning and someone doesn't say it back, you know, yeah. and just recognizing a lot of us are suffering. And that's how we, we, we externally display that the same way you said ex externally it shows up in our lives yeah we display that in the way that we treat other people we display that when you're you know checking out in a grocery store and the clerk has an attitude and you take it personally yeah opposed to think you don't know what the hell that person is going through right you don't know and in the and I love that you talk about this in the podcast. You guys are going to have to listen on Wednesday because that's amazing. Yeah, and um, there's a good podcast. Y'all got to check it out. We did it. We did it. She did it. Yeah. Me on. Awesome. <laughs> like the unawareness of what we're saying to ourselves and being yeah. that being slow down enough to hear it. So when you do hear it, you're like, what? And yeah. even for me, things that I've said to myself that I hear or I'll stop and I'm like, wow wow like where yeah. and then kind of source where that came from and a lot of our stuff our shit if you will which i could come i should come up with an acronym an acronym for shit um <laughs> i know right it really comes from our childhood and then we kind of feed into those beliefs and going back to allowing pain to be a fuel driver force of a lot of great things in life and mm -hmm. not looking at that so i just appreciate you so much um I connected with you, and I, that's, that's the beauty of the internet, just connecting with people that, to me, and I know that when we first had our first conversation, you were saying, oh, I was kind of like just getting out of it around that time. I, I couldn't tell, and I think if anything, the light that you had brought into your own life, mm -hmm. the presence that you were willing into your life, if you will, um, was like what drew me to you, and you initially yeah. had Again, which I'm hoping you bring it back. <laughs> uh, your reality, <laughs> which to yeah. me was a firm, beautiful statement of what we should be striving to do every day, rocking our reality, questioning our reality, right? Yeah. And be to be creators and not victims, which yeah. can be it can be easy to play into that victim role and be pissed off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah instead of understanding instead of understanding like you said that life we don't there's much that we want to control that we can we don't have mm -hmm. control the only 
true thing we have control over is ourselves, like our thoughts, how we choose to show up, what we choose to, you know, um, go toward or shift away from or allow or whatever. Um, how we, yeah, how we want to be. Um, that's the only thing we have control over. Everything else is kind of like obsolete. And so the goal in some ways is self mastery not even some ways, always is self-mastery. And that'll be a lifelong journey that we'll all be on, you know. I don't think anyone, even some of the best uh, wellness gurus and um, uh, mindset coaches and positivity gurus, they'll still tell you that it's a journey. Self-mastery is a journey and we'll all be on that journey, but you do get stronger. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. You do get stronger. You do get better. Um, and you are able to um, meet life differently when you make that decision that you want to. And when you um, stop <laughs> really ignoring uh, what's going on on the inside and how that's manifesting itself on the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> to see where your journey takes you and I want to thank you too for showing up and deciding to be a vessel for healing yeah. for so many other people because like I said it's, we need it it's not even exactly. we, you know we can a lot of us think we can't and I think sometimes too that word is just just like many words which you guys are going to have to listen to the podcast because we get into just blanket statements that are made that if we are not mindful and if we don't investigate them enough we can easily fall into the traps of you know, thinking, well, I've done this as a teen. Well, let me just be positive because I'm feeling down opposed to, mm -hmm. no, let me feel what I'm feeling and try mm -hmm. to figure out feeling that way. And then insert some positivity opposed to pushing it under the carpet because I think that being positive means you're always positive, even when you feel like being negative, right? <laughs> yeah. We get, I don't want to get too much because I almost led into one of those questions, but I don't, I want you guys to definitely listen to the podcast and um, just check out some of the other conversations that we touched on because I think when you think about mindset mastery, when you think about mindfulness, there's no perfection in anything. Yeah, absolutely. There's not. no end all be all. Now that I've been meditating for seven years, I can levitate. I can sit here for an hour. I can, like, I was laughing with someone yesterday, and I'm, I'm laughing like people. I meditate because I need it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, Saying this to you because I've been depressed. I've had anxiety. I've had moments where I'm not proud of myself, of who I say I am, opposed to how I really show up and all those different <laughs> things, right? So being able to have a tool that allows me to see life from third person perspective, you know, we teach what we need as coaches. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. You know, it's like note to self. Oh, this really yeah. works. And then everyone else about it because you know the power behind it. So before we um, kind of close this out today, and I want to leave room for if you guys have any questions, because we do have some time today. Um, do you have time? Yeah, okay, I we time. have. You have time? I got time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got um, time today. <laughs> So I thought it was funny because yeah, uh, when, when we did the podcast, I was reading an article about habits of happy people. Mm -hmm. And I definitely want to talk about this because if you guys follow her on Instagram, so she's on Instagram at underscore, underscore. precious I am underscore yeah. um and just your story just your presence is to <laughs> me you know because me and you talked about this too where you can see happy in people yeah not the fake happy smile because I could I got a nice smile my god oh, okay. <laughs> I could full smile all day I could smile I through the pain however um following you I just I get happy looking at you even your picture yeah. that I was when I'm doing the the graphic, I just felt happy looking at them. I'm like, this Thank just makes you. me so happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, to you, just a couple tips on what are what are your habits of being a happy person? Well, I would say first, um, it's a daily choice. Um, you can't be anything you don't choose to be. And that goes for, see, I'll, I'll always go deep. So that goes for... Um, unhappiness as well or messed up situations that you get in there's always that little pivotal moment whether you paid attention to it or not where you chose that you know what I mean and so for me that's a daily choice that I want to show up 
and feel. I mean, it's like, oh, we talked about this on a podcast. It's like, I live for a vibe. Like, <laughs> good vibes only is like, it's not even a statement for me. It's a way of living. And I, so I said out to say, there are certain things that I do every day or places that I go, you know, the majority of time just because it feels good. Um, and I mean, that's my true addiction is like um, natural happiness, a natural high, having a natural high. Um, and so one, I make the choice, you know, every day, um, even when I'm feeling down, like, oh, if you guys watch my Instagram stories about two days ago, or even on my page, I was saying how I was like, I went through, um, I had a moment and that day that it, I was having a moment, you know, I um took that day to kind of like try to get myself together. But the next day I was still feeling a little crappy, but the next day I got my booty up and I got out. And I shared that as well on that page. But I say that to say is that every day I'm making that choice. You know, sometimes multiple times a day if I'm feeling down. I ask myself, well, what do you need in this moment to feel good? What do you need to shift that energy? Who do you need to talk to? Where do you need to go? Is there something you're, you're ignoring? I know for me, too, like if I'm not um, being intentional about my life's work, and like giving enough time and attention to that, I'll automatically be depressed. You know, if I'm letting too much outside people and um, things crowd me out where I don't have that time to hear my voice, to ask God what next step should I take on this journey, I'll just automatically be down. Like, and, and I know that about myself. So I've kind of learned how I operate. Um, the other thing is that, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm listening. Yeah. The other thing is that um, habits is it's truly is like um, valuing those early hours in the daytime. Um, sometimes when you're on fire, you're just going to get up at four or five in the morning anyways, because you're just so excited about life. But even on time, days when you, you know, aren't inspired into action that way, sometimes it's good to just get up and take those first few hours of the day to kind of really connect with yourself, to really just have a moment um, with yourself, with God. Think about your to-do, because sometimes you can be stressed and overwhelmed and sad because you just haven't even planned out anything. You haven't been intentional about anything in your life. You just let life happen to you, and you're not really saying how you want it, how you want your life to go. So spending those first few hours of the day to really think about, like, okay, A, B, C, D, prioritize. I prioritize my tasks throughout the day, the larger versus the ones that aren't so important. I, another thing is to-do list. Like I'm my phone, my notes on my phone. Like I have like running list and I don't, some people work with hard deadlines. I have like my, I have my heart deadline in mind, but I just do something each day off that list. And I don't stress myself up, out or beat myself up if I don't make you know, make it to do something. Like I said, I spent two, the last two days was really weird for me. There was tons I had to do, but the days are gone. What am I going to do? Get them back, feel bad because I didn't do some stuff that I needed, felt like I needed to do, you know? Um, the other thing, I have to say this, um, having, you know, worked with many people and helping them shift their, their nutrition, um, <laughs> but also knowing the power in food, like I'm very, very, very intentional about really eating some most of the healthiest foods i'm not a vegan i'm not a vegetarian but i'm mindful about what i'm putting in my body every day and not every day is a great day and i didn't want to say great or not so great but not every day am i eating plant-based and only drinking water and only you know um uh drinking green juice and smoothies and things like that however majority of my days when i say majority i mean 70 80 percent of the time i'm putting stuff foods in my body that's going to make me feel good. Food has an energetic code. Um, food has an energetic code, just like, you know, your thoughts and all of the other things in life that carry energy. And food, literally by food, you can change the DNA of, of your body, your cellular DNA. So even, you know, sometimes you're sad because you're just eating all of the foods that make, that weigh you down. Like, I gotta go scientific real quick if Y'all bear with me, but I have to drop this, which because a lot of people don't know this, but like, let's say green vegetables, people think, oh, I'm just supposed to eat green vegetables. But the truth about green vegetables is that they grow, grow up toward the sun. 
you know, they absorb vitamin D from the sun and chlorophyll from the sun. What that does for the body is give you a light source and sense of energy. If you eat root vegetables like sweet potatoes and potatoes and things that grow underground, they ground you. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you eat protein, it gives you more like of a masculine sort of energy versus sugar. It makes you all over the place and it helps with your depression and anxiety and stress and all of that, even though most of us stress eat. But my point in saying all that is to say I'm intentional because I want to be happy. I eat foods that make me happy, not foods that always taste the best or make me feel or, or the most comfort comforting, but I'm intentional about putting the foods into my body that's going to make me feel good. And if you don't, aren't educated about what those are, you can always do a quick Google search. And of course, sometimes if you're new, your palate, you know, takes time to shift, but it's all about intention. What do you want for your life? Because again, like I said, there's always that space where you made a choice, you know, at the point that you know, and now you know, because I'm telling you, so you keep eating crap. <laughs> You have to know that you're choosing to not be your happiest. So that was long, but as to sum it up, I make that choice every day. I'm intentional about what I put into my body in terms of nutritionally, and I spend time in spaces. Oh, the first part of my morning, I spend time trying to plan and pray and all that, meditate. And then I spend time in spaces that make me feel good. Sometimes that, that's cafe. Sometimes it's what just a girlfriend. We kicking it, doing the wine thing. You know, and sometimes it's out at the club because I like to have fun. But I figure out what I need to be happy, and I do that. Yeah. 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 I love all those tips so much. And um, I think the more that you get keen to those things, especially food, you know, recognizing. and you big today and just just play back maybe what you ate yesterday when we don't feel well you know we eat the ice cream right you always see sad movies the girls eating ice cream right and it's it's mm -hmm. a trigger of you know um playing into those emotions and that emotional right almost wanting to stay there it's almost like i always tell people if you're feeling sad don't listen to sad music <laughs> yeah real talk don't <laughs> you're gonna be like waste like 10 times sadder. right Right. Um, so I thank you so much for everything that you've offered us today and the energy that you bring. And I can't wait to um, just see everything that happens with your book tour, hopefully be able to see you December 9th in New York City as well. Um, yeah. And let's just know before we get off of this, where are some of your stops? So I'm in Pittsburgh, which is home. You know, I had to go home for, you know, Pittsburgh made me literally. Um, so I'm really excited, I, of course, about all the stops, but I'm excited to go back home. It's also been a little while. So I'm in Pittsburgh, November 25th um, at Peace of Mind. It's a wellness space. So we're doing uh, um, all of the events or self-care experiences, the book tour. Um, so we're doing a... Um, we're doing uh, various wellness workshops, and then I'll do some talking, and you'll get a book and all that. So that's Pittsburgh. And then D.C., December 2nd, New York, December 9th. I'm uh, actually in between there. I'm coming just at it, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, so stay tuned if you're in the North Carolina, Virginia area, because I'll be down there. And then I'm coming back to Atlanta um, for December 16th. Raleigh will be in between the... Uh, the ninth and the ninth and the sixteenth, yeah. So Raleigh would be like the twelfth or thirteenth or something like that. But yeah, so Pittsburgh, New York, DC, Pittsburgh, DC, New York, Atlanta, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Atlanta. And I'm driving, so send uh, uh, traveling mercies my way and prayers because Lord knows I just need to get to and fro safe. <laughs> and you will. New York City is. Um, New York City is in Brooklyn at New Women's Space. So here's the dope thing, too. Like, all of the spaces that we're doing workshops at um, are either wellness or women-owned or, you know, spaces. I was very intentional about this whole project, right? So the people yeah. that I've connected with, like, in D.C. is Mindspace D.C., New York, New Women's Space, um, Atlanta Yoga, Samadhi, um, um, North Carolina is Juice Vibes, Juice Bar, and uh, Pittsburgh is Peace of Mind. So, like, this is a whole vibe, like, honestly. And everybody involved in this project and process who has been helping me, including you, Ebony, just having me on, um, we all share the same heart intention. And that I'm really excited about. Um, but New York is 
November, I mean, New York is New Women's Space, December 9th, and tickets are across the board, except for North Carolina. We're working out those details, but tickets are $35. And with that, you get a, a um, book, uh, meet and greet, I'll do a book signing, you get a yoga class, or in Pittsburgh, it's a breath work class, um, and more. So join me, yeah. stay tuned, keep it locked. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for your time here today. And then before we leave, just let us know where we can find your social media handles. I know your website just dropped. Yes, y'all. Man, your girl been working. <laughs> so website just uh, just dropped www.preciousiam.com or preciousiam.com. Um, Instagram at underscore preciousiam underscore. The regular one was already taken. So make sure you use the underscores. Underscore precious I am underscore. And then, um, and, um, excuse me, Twitter is the same. Um, at underscore precious I am underscore. And then my actual Facebook precious I am page, business page is it's precious I am. And if you're on my personal page, you already know it's precious Frazier. <laughs> and if not, precious Frazier. Um, I, I want to just leave one final word, just thanking everybody. Um, I know we didn't get to, you know, engage too much with the comments, but we had, this was like a very important conversation that needs to be had, but we appreciate everybody who tuned in. Um, and I'm grateful and we're both grateful for everybody who shared um, space with us today. Um, it does not, does not uh, go um, unvalued. You know, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you was here with us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And these conversations just for me, um, that's why I call them soul chats, because it's it's just digging deeper than the surface and being willing to have conversations that are hard to have, but have them on a mass scale so that, you know, people watching this on the playback, make sure you guys share this, make sure you comment, but you're not alone. You're not alone on this journey. And the more that we understand that, we feel into that, and we go to these events and we actually mingle and, you know, change, changing your mind means you do need new friends. It does mean you need new, yeah. new spaces. Yeah, you might need to let some friends go, change your diet. There's so many things incorporated yeah. with self care and self wellness and self discovery that you know when you begin the journey, just think it's all encompassing. <laughs> and Never it's fun. End. There's nothing it better is. than feeling good. There's nothing in the world that can replace feeling good and like peace of mind and and clarity of direction for your life and things like that. Yeah. And knowing who the hell you are, and you talked about that too, just knowing who the hell you are so that when it gets questioned, yeah. you know, you have someone else to affirm who you are, you know, you know where you stand and you know you have, you're grounded and you're rooted at least in that, at the very least, right? Yeah. So thank we you so much. appreciate you as well, Janelle. <laughs> thank you, everyone else. Um, please look out for the podcast with Precious. That'll be dropping this Wednesday. We are on iTunes, SoundCloud, your favorite listening channels. All you have to do is search Soul Chat. I'm sure Precious will be sharing it. Um, Absolutely. Later in the I'll be sharing it. Queens recognize queens. And as I always say, real recognize real. And queens recognize queens. Have an amazing day, Precious. Have an amazing day. Thank for you everybody. so much for having me. And thanks, everybody, for Thank tuning you. in. Have a good day, y'all. Yes. Bye. Bye.